is the way we're going to look at leadership. Something I find very striking and odd right now is this emphasis on whether Kamala Harris is a biological mother. There was a moment last night with Governor Sarah Huckabee Sanders when she had a comment to make about comparing her own life and how her kids make her humble. And then she compared and said, well, if Vice President Harris doesn't have anything keeping her humble, second gentleman Doug Emhoff did respond to this tonight. Listen to what he said. They said that somehow because Cole and Ella aren't Kamala's quote unquote biological children, that she doesn't have anything in her life to keep her humble. As if keeping women humble, whether you have children or not, is something we should strive for. Lauren, try to make sense if you can of this. I, I don't, what, what am I missing? <laughs> it's just such a losing argument. Yeah. And the thing is, Republicans do have the advantage on immigration, on the economy. There are smart, fair critiques Donald Trump could be making of Kamala Harris's very controversial policy platform. Instead, he's doing these personal attacks. He's, you know, on race, on gender. He's going in the opposite direction of the conservative movement. They try to de-emphasize personal identity and the factor it plays in your life and your challenges and your outcomes. And so I can't make sense of this from a strategic standpoint, from a person-to-person -person standpoint. There's nothing in my expert background that can make heads or tails of it. It's just bad politics. Or this is post what Leo was saying earlier, yeah. that for Donald Trump, I'll be emphasizing these personal characteristics. He's been doing this from the very beginning, from the moment he came down the escalator. Remember it's embarrassing for Republicans. He's talking about the Mexican judges that can't, you know, they can't take care of him or can't uh, judge him. Right. He's talked about um, uh, all these questions that really get at identity because in his mind, it appears, who knows what's inside Donald Trump's mind, but we know what he says. And his words that he's saying that the real Americans are the ones who are like the people who follow him, and everybody else is not really a real American. Well, what about what's not being said? Because I am really intrigued by the absence of an endorsement from the Teamsters tonight. I mean, this is the first time it's in nearly three. Deal. It's a very big moment, especially because the trend has been to support Democrats and now saying, never mind, we're not going to support anyone right now. Translates to me that they're not going to support the Democratic candidate. Why is it such a big deal in the overall landscape of politics not to have the Teamsters endorse anyone right now? So I should say, we should qualify that, though, because the Teamsters Black Caucus came out and said, oh, no, we are endorsing Kamala Harris. Mm. And we want to be very clear that there are very big divisions and splits within the Teamsters organization at large. This is a vote of no confidence in our leadership. And I do think that there are a couple of things going on. There are severe splits. When we look at polling that's been done over the last three months, consistently the Teamsters have shown, based on gender, based on race, based on geographic region, very sharp divisions in a, this split between Kamala Harris and Dom, Donald Trump. Before that, it was Joe Biden. Um, one of the other things, too, though, that we're seeing is that Sean O'Brien has been has consistently tried to find an entryway into the Republican Party. Why? Because he says he wants a seat at the table. And it's an interesting. I think it's an interesting argument to make. It's leverage politics, essentially. You know, he can. Uh, one of the things that the team series has pointed out is that the Democratic Party, including Joe Biden and Kamala Harris, have been very, very good for unions, exceptionally good for unions. And what they are concerned about is that if Donald Trump is reelected, that uh, actually he will be very bad for unions. Sean O'Brien's argument is, I want a seat at the table. I think what he doesn't under quite understand, though, and what those Teamsters, I think, who support Donald Trump don't understand, is that leverage politics very rarely work. I mean, we're talking about a political candidate who sat down with Elon Musk a few, month, a few weeks ago and celebrated the idea of being able to fire people, right, and fire workers and, fire, and get around unions. So this is fundamentally anti-union, but I do think what we are picking up are sizable demographic, racial, geographic, uh, class differences that have been roiling the Teamsters for a very long time. But you, you know, the idea for many people who have been, uh, who are activists, the idea of leverage politics not working is very, very demoralizing. Whether it's accurate or not, I mean, it's the idea that it might not be the case. And speaking of unions, I want to get your point in, but speaking of unions, Donald Trump must have heard me say, make your own case. <laughs> because I want you to listen to what he said on Fox just tonight. He's talking about Biden getting out of the race, Harris going in. He's they said, Joe, it's over, you're getting out. And he said, I'm not getting out, you're getting out. 
and they were very nasty, 25th Amendment and everything else, he got out, and they put her in, and she somehow, a woman, somehow she's doing better than he did, Yeah. but I, I can't imagine it can last. Well, can it? I do think there are questions that are fair to ask Kamala Harris about her very active role behind the scenes with Joe Biden as a trusted advisor, as someone who's the last decision maker in the room, and I, who my data shows has been the most active vice president ever from a public appearances standpoint. She blew Mike Pence out of the water with her speeches and ceremonial duties and everything else. So yeah, you heard I'll, the woman I'll set that aside. Too. You, heard, <laughs> you heard the woman reference, not too subtle, go ahead. Yeah, I mean, Trump's idiosyncrasies, I'll never be able to fully explain, mm -hmm. unfortunately. On the union point, really quickly, I do think what Republicans did was smart here. They offered O'Brien a primetime speaking slot at the RNC, relatively costless action that clearly got them a benefit. He asked to speak at the DNC, he did not get it. It's a huge deal. They have two million members, if you count the retirees, who turn out to vote 70% of the time. That's not a group that you want to alienate. And frankly, the lack of curiosity by Democrats about why they're hemorrhaging working class voters, I think those are interesting questions they need to ask. Why is Trump so appealing to the rank and file? Why does he have some firefighters, buildings, unions? He has, the majority of unions are with Harris, but He's making some inroads there that are interesting. Well, we'll have to wait and see what more he has to say about that very notion. Stand by, everyone.